على الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نضل أو نضل أو نزل أو نزل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah We praise him We thank him we seek his assistance, we seek his tawfiq, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us see that which is right as right and give us the tawfiq to follow it and to see that which is evil as evil and give us the tawfiq to avoid it. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. Innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are guided, who guide others. And we seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from being among those who are misguided, who misguide others. Uh, so as we discussed, we are still on the topic of al-wudu. And um, obviously we started this topic, which is a very important topic. You know, al-wudu is the primary key to the salah. And the salah is not accepted without a sound wudu that makes it such an important topic. And as we said, it is a ibadah in itself. Yani wudu itself is a ibadah and it is a prerequisite for another ibadah, right? As a matter of fact, more than one ibadah. We said salah, we said uh, tawaf, we said also touching the Quran requires a wudu as well. Um, very quickly, um, you know, I see a couple of new faces. Um, let me just go back real quick. I know we covered all, already all of this, but um, you know, just to, I'm sorry, um, just to, so that everybody is on the same page. We discussed that al-wudu, linguistically speaking, in Arabic language, it means, pure, it means uh, beauty and cleanliness, right? And that is exactly how the Muslim comes to make a ibadah, those types of ibadah that require a wudu, they, we come with cleanliness and we come with beauty, you know, beauty to stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. We also said in the Sharia terminology, it means to use the water over the four organs that are part of the wudu, namely the uh, face, the hands, the arms, um, the head, and the two feet. Uh, and in the manner that is described in the Sharia not just in any way, right? In the manner that is described in the Sharia ah, as an act of worship, which means with an intention as an act of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal. We also said that it is an obligatory, uh, or ob it is obligatory wajib after the minor hadath, which includes, for example, relieving oneself, right? Urinating or defecating or passing wind. All of that requires uh, al-wudu. Uh, so that you go back or you get back into a state of purity. Um, we also said that there are um, multiple evidences on the, uh, on the fact that the wudu is mandatory. We mentioned the ayah of Surah Al-Ba'idah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha qumtum ila salati faghsilu wujuhakum to the end of the ayah. We also said that there are multiple ahadith from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We uh, mentioned the hadith from Sahih Muslim that no salah is accepted without wudu. He alayhi salatu wassalam said that there is no salah is accepted uh, without wudu. And also alayhi salatu wassalam said, uh, in this hadith is uh, in both uh, Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari, 
he said, لا يقبل الله صلاة من أحدث حتى يتوضع. The prayer of none amongst you is accepted in in a state of impurity until he performs ablution. And we said also, so this is you know the proof from the Quran and from the Sunnah, as well as there is a consensus among all the ulama. Not a single scholar uh, uh, disputed this, right? So there's alhamdulillah the uh, consensus of the whole ummah. And we also said that uh, there are, we also talked about the many uh, uh, benefits or, or blessings and uh, uh, fruits of al wudu. You know, it, it has multiple uh, virtues, right? We talked about that as well. We said that it is half of the iman. Uh, we also said it is an expiation of sins, and we gave a lot of uh, hadith, right? We just don't have time to go back and uh, redo them. Uh, but we said that also it is a man also maintaining wudu is one of the qualities of uh, the believers. Uh, also, it entitles one to be among al ghur al which are those who will come on the day of judgment with their parts of the wudu as glittering in light. And they will be identified, they will be distinctive on the day of judgment, as Rasulullah told us. Also, it is one of the uh, things that uh, allow the person to enter paradise. Not only that, but he or she can choose any gate of the eight gates of Jannah to enter from. What a great blessing. So we said it is a great ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal, and it implies coming clean, purifying oneself, right? From all the dirt, from all the, uh, you know, the impurities, which includes also, uh, now obviously wudu is from the physical aspect, but that also we said includes the uh, cleaning oneself spiritually from all the sins, from all the, uh, you know, the disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, and the greatest one of them is shirk or any types of shirk. Um, also, we, talk, we talked about uh, um, the prerequisites of al wudu. Remember, we said that uh, there are prerequisites, shurut uh, al uh, wudu, and uh, that uh, includes seven things. We said the first one is that the, Muslim, the person should be a Muslim. Obviously, a wudu is not accepted from a non Muslim. Uh, also, the person should be a sane person in a state of sanity. Uh, it is not accepted from an insane person. Also, we said that the person should be adult enough to be able to discern what the wudu means, right? So, as as uh, um, uh, when the person when, or when the child becomes old enough to be able to discern, then he or she may be taught how to, to do wudu um, uh, and how to perform the right wudu. Also, we said that uh, one of the prerequisites of a wudu is the intention. A wudu without intention is not accepted, and we said the place of the intention is in the heart. It is not to be spelled out in the tongue, but rather the place of the intention in general, any intention, it is in the heart. Uh, also, we said that one of the prerequisites is to use pure permissible water. Pure water, as we discussed before, remember when we talked about the different types of water, and what water can be used to achieve purity. We already talked about that. So here we're using that discussion. So we said pure and also permissible, which means you can't steal water and make wudu with it. It has to be what we say halal, right? It, sh it should be permissible water. Also, the fourth one is to remove anything that would keep the water from reaching the skin. Yani anything that attaches to the skin or to the nail that would prevent the water from getting to it, right? whether it is manicure for the woman or it could be if somebody works in painting, right? Paint can get on the skin or if somebody works at a bakery, right? Uh, you know, some of the dough may, may attach to the, to the skin as well. All of this need to be removed before uh, uh, making wudu. Also, we said that when the need for it is there, you know, if somebody went to the restroom to relieve oneself, right? then they must do istinja or uh, istijmar to clean oneself, right? Um, that is not related, by the way, some people may get confused. This is not related to the wudu itself. So not to be understood from this, some people do this, by the way. They do istinja, meaning using the water on the private parts, right? Before every wudu. That is wrong. That is not, this is not what we're saying. We're saying this is a condition if it was preceded by you know, using the restroom to, um, to relieve oneself, 
right? Then to clean oneself, you should do either al-istijmar or al-istinja, right? And if the time for the prayer, for example, comes hour, hours later, you don't need to do al-istijmar anymore, right? You just do the wudu because you did clean oneself at the time. So they're, they're not related. But if you had to go to the restroom, then you need to clean oneself, right? The sixth condition is that washing, you need to wash all the organs that need to be washed as part of the wudu. Yani missing one, missing for example wiping over the head, makes that wudu is not sound. It is not acceptable. The seventh one, which we said is this is for some people who have some types of illnesses, for example, they can't control their bladder, you know, they continuously, for example, they, they may urinate without control, right? They can't control themselves. We said for those people, right, then they must, or the time for the prayer must have come. They can't make wudu from, you know, earlier and then use that wudu to perform the prayer. When the time for the prayer comes and they're ready to perform the prayer, then they can, then they need to perform wudu and then pray immediately. The same thing applies for, for example, the woman who have, you know, flowing uh, blood beyond the period, right? The period is called in the Sharia, uh, Sharia terminology, uh, it is called al-mahid, al-hayd, I'm sorry. You know, and during the hayd, right, then she, uh, she can't actually pray. But after the hayd, after the typical period of time that, she, that, she, that it takes her to, uh, for al-hayd, some women, may, the, 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 the blood may flow for a longer period of time. In that extra time, it is called istihada, which is not hayd, but istihada. In that case, then the, woman, the, 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 the Muslim woman should perform pray, uh, wudu for every prayer. She can't use, for example, you know, the wudu from before or from the previous uh, salah. She must perform the, the wudu for every prayer at the time when she is ready to pray. Clear? This is obviously for not for us, but for our sisters, and it is something that is important to understand. Some, some, some uh, sisters don't understand this, and it is quite important. All right, so... Um, we also talked about, uh, you know, when somebody is, for example, they hurt or injured themselves. Remember, we talked about the uh, cases where there, there is bandaid or, or band over that or, or if it is uncovered. Also, there are some cases. Uh, do we need to go back and talk about this or are we good? Are we good? Okay. All right. So, and then we talked about um, the obligatory acts of the wudu. Now, remember we said what is, you know, some people may get confused. Why are these called prerequisites or conditions? And why, why are these called uh, acts or pillars of the wudu, right? What is the difference? We said the prerequisites are what come before. And the pillars are what makes that thing, right? The, the wudu itself. So the pillar are what happens within the wudu, right? And the prerequisites, it what should be met before the wudu. So we said at a minimum, there are think six obligatory acts or obligatory pillars uh, uh, that uh, must be done uh, for the wudu to be sound. We said the first one is to wash the face. And uh, obviously the uh, proof on that is what Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your faces. So that's the first one. And what is mandatory or what is required is once, to wash the face once, right? And we said that includes rinsing the mouth, the, the mouth and cleaning the nose because they are part of the, of the face. And we gave all the evidences. I'm not going to go back to the evidences. For every single one of them, if you remember, we gave the proof from the Sahih Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here we're going very quickly so that we have time for the, for the video to, to finish it and com uh, comment on it. I want to make sure that we finish it today, inshallah. Also, we said the second one, what is obligatory, is to wash the arms, right? Up until the elbows, including the elbows, at least once, right? And the hand, or the arms, we said that uh, the, this is from the fingertip to the to the elbows, including the elbows. Some people miss that, by the way. They may wash from here, from the fist until the, until the, uh, the elbows. But really, the washing of the, of the arms should be from the fingertip, including the nails, up until the, elbow, the elbows, including the elbows once. 
Also, we said wiping the entire, the third one is to wipe the entire head, including the ears. And we said the ears is part or are part of the head, and the head should be uh, wiped once. Wamsahu biru'usikum. Um, the fourth one is washing the feet up until the, an the ankles uh, once. So for each one, to, it needs to be washed. Every feet or every foot should, needs to be uh, washed once up until the ankles, including the ankles. Uh, this, the fifth one is to, that we said that the proper order. So what is required also, you can, for example, wipe over the head and then wash your face and then wash your arms and then wash your, your, uh, your feet. That, that is not a sound, that is not a sound uh, wudu. The order is meant for it, and we said that the scholars have said part of the reason or part of the proof on that is that Allah Azza wa Jal ordered them in that way in the ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also, he, uh, all the narrations of how he used to perform the wudu alayhi salatu wasalam, narrated them that he did them in that order. And also some of the scholars noticed something interesting in that case, in that the case that Rasulullah Sallallahu or Allah, I'm sorry, Allah Azza wa Jal in the ayah, he started by saying washing, if you want to perform the prayer, then wash your face and then wash your arms and then wipe over your head and then wash your feet. If the order was not necessary or wasn't mandatory, right? Allah Azza wa Jal would have grouped all the, uh, the organs that need to be washed together, right? It is very, uh, uh, yani, uh, qu uh, you know, uh, quite obvious that it should have been wash your face, wash your arms, wash your feet, and then wipe over your head, right? So wiping over the head came in the middle. Right between the, the organs that need to be washed and interrupted the order, right? So that tells us that they are meant for, for that order and they need to be that. So somebody who flips the order around or you know, uh, flips the organs around and wash them in a different way is not a sound wudu, it's not acceptable. The, the sixth uh, obligatory act, al-wajib, right, al-arkan al of the wudu is the succession. Meaning that the next organ needs to be washed without too much delay. And the scholars have said, you know, one of the criteria for that, they say that the previous organ does not dry completely naturally on its own before you do the, the next organ. Yani don't, for example, start, you know, the wudu, you wash your face, and then 15 minutes later, then you wash your, your arms. That is interruption. You cannot continue that wudu, you need to start over. Right? This is what we mean by succession. So you should wash uh, one organ after the, uh, another without uh, too much delay. These, are, this is, these six uh, uh, obligatory acts make a perfect and sound wudu acceptable and you can perform prayer with it. So if you wash your face, if you wash your arms, each one of them once, if you wipe over your head, including the, including the ears, right? And washing the face, uh, including the, uh, the mouth and the, and the nose, uh, cleaning the mouth and the nose. And then washing your arms until, from the fingertip until the elbows. And then wiping over your head, including the ears. And washing your each, each foot up until the ankles once, in that order, without too much delay, that makes a perfect and acceptable and sound wudu. That is the bare minimum. Now, then we talked about, so these are the obligatory acts that you must do for the wudu to be, uh, to be sound. Now we said there are also recommended or sunan al-wudu, right? You don't, you know, if somebody misses one or more or all of them, right, doesn't nullify the wudu. The wudu is still valid, but this obviously makes for a uh, more perfect, more complete, Wudu that gets you more ajr from Allah Azza wa Jal and you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I see you have a question. Okay. Abdul Aziz. Sorry. Zakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullah. So, a couple of questions. Uh, first one is if you do go back to the slide. So, first one is let's uh, say someone is in the city of Wudu. And if the person happens to be, you know, less than whatever, does he have to go back and perform 
the entire world, you can just swim three times. Because that's what I heard. You could just swim three times and you could still go in. I'm not sure I understand the question. Sorry. So let's say you are, let's say I'm in the state of weather. Okay. But then I have to eat something in the middle. Oh, okay. So you ate something. Yeah. Yes. No, eating in general doesn't nullify the wudu. Actually, this is our next topic. I don't know if you're gonna, we're going to get to it, but hopefully we will. If not, then next, definitely. This is the topic of what nullifies one's wudu. Eating and drinking in general does not nullify one's wudu, except if you eat the meat of the camel, which I know is not very common in this country. Uh, the evidence from the Prophet ﷺ, he was asked about eating the meat of the sheep and, he's, uh, and the Sahabi who asked him, Rasulullah ﷺ answered, he said, it's up to you. If you want to make wudu, sure. If you don't, then you don't have to. Then he was asked about the meat of the camel and he said, you should perform wudu after eating the camel. So that's the only exception. Okay, so that clarifies, uh, especially during Ramadan, right after we break our fast. Absolutely, you don't need to renew it. No. Your wudu is fine. No. Well, I mean, if there is you obviously leftover of, of food that obviously will distract you, you should obviously uh, wash your just wash your mouth so that you remove uh, you know the, the, the leftover of the of the food. Yes. The other question is about the session. Yes. Uh, let's say if I'm at work and I have socks on. Mm -hmm. um, what's the ruling on that? Uh, do I have to like take the socks off? Well, that's a different, uh, obviously, the discussion. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to do anything with succession. But that is the topic of al-masah, which we call masah on the khuffayn, right? And there is obviously a big uh, dis you know, disagreement over this and what, what qualifies as a khuff. Does it have to be from leather or, or can it be from other than leather? There is, the, there is actually a discussion on that coming up later. So, and I'm sorry, forgive me if I don't answer this now, just because I want to make sure that we finish the video. Inshallah, if not next Saturday, but the following, we will come to this. Keep it with you so that if somebody wants to ask a question. Any more questions? Welcome. Thank you. What about if you're a smoker? Do you still have to do a full wudu? <laughs> <laughs> do you want the, f the full complete answer? Or part of the answer? Uh, I hope you do want the full answer. Full answer will work. If okay. Have, okay. So the full answer is this. This is actually of two parts. The first fold, is it permissible to smoke or not? And the answer to that is not. Smoking is haram. So really, one should quit smoking first. Second, may Allah guide all of us, right? If somebody smokes, smoking in itself does not nullify the wudu. No. But obviously, you know, the person should remember Allah Azza wa Jal, should strive to obey Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, make jihad against his desires and her desires. And I can tell you that there's no doubt about it that smoking is impermissible in the deen of Islam. There are, and there are overwhelming evidences for that. Now, obviously, this is not the topic of our halaqa today, but there is not just one evidence, not two, not three, overwhelming evidences that it is haram and it is hurtful, uh, harmful and it hurts you, uh, and your, uh, you know, it hurts your health, it hurts everybody around you. So there's overwhelming evidence on that. But it does not nullify the wudu. Um, so moving forward, so we said the recommended or sunan al-wudu, right? We said from the sunan al-wudu is to say bismillah at the beginning. So before you start the wudu, you say bismillah. And then we also from the sunan al-wudu is to use the two thick siwak, right? To clean the teeth, which is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We talked about that as well, using a siwak, which is highly recommended at all times. But we said also specifically before the wudu, before the salah, when entering the masjid, when wake, upon waking up, right, upon, uh, or upon uh, when you read, when you recite the Quran, all of this are, uh, uh, you know, times of uh, highly recommended using the, using the siwak. Also, we said from Sunan al wudu is to wash your hands three times, including if you can, to actually uh, make sure that the water gets through the, between the fingers, right? But this is sunnah, it is not a wajib of the wudu. Some people take it as a wajib, 
and that the wudu is not is not valid. We say that is not correct. This is also only sunnah uh, from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to wash it three times. Also, from the sunnah of al wudu is to uh, al, uh, to clean the mouth by rinsing it, right? Uh, and, and that basically means that you actually not just you know put water in your mouth and then spit it out, right? That's not washing, right? What we said by that we mean is to actually uh, swirl the water around inside the mouth. Make sure you clean the, the, the mouth very, uh, uh, you know, uh, perfectly. And also to clean the nose, right? Uh, and that is by actually, you know, sniffing water well as much as you can inside your nose and then you blow it out uh, unless you are fasting. If you're fasting, then don't exaggerate in uh, sniffing the water up, right? For the fear that the water can get into the throat and will uh, yani, uh, invalidate your, uh, uh, your fasting. But in other, in other cases, if you're not fasting, then you should cleanly, or you should uh, clean your mouth, mouth well by swirling the water around and also clean your nose well by sniffing the water up as much as you can. Also, we said from the sunan of the wudu is to massage the arms when you wash the arms. So a lot of people do this. And again, remember, we're talking about the sunnah. It is not a mandatory act, right? So even if you just let the water run on your arms up until the ankles and it includes everything, then that is a sound wudu. But what is better is to actually, as the water is, you, as you're washing your arms, to actually massage it with your hand, right? Starting obviously with the right hand and then with the left hand. So also from the sunnah is to actually uh, clean your beard, right? If it is a, ve a very light beard, then you should actually make sure that it gets to the skin. If it is a, mashallah, full and, and huge beard, then what suffices is to actually clean it from the outside but it, what would be better is to actually, uh, you know, uh, use your wet fingers and go inside, right, for water, go inside in and, and wash it and, and, and wash it from the inside. Also from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to, that he used to like to start with the right side and then the left side. So from sunnah al-wudu is to always uh, wash the right side. For example, in the arms, wash the right arms first and then uh, the right arm and then, and then the left arm. Likewise for the feet to wash the right foot and then the, and then the left foot. But if you, what, what if you start with the left foot? No problem, no problem. It's a sunnah, it's not a mandatory act. So your wudu is still sound, but what is better is to wash the right and then the, and then the left side. Also from the sunan of the Prophet or from the sunan of the wudu is to actually wash the face, the arms and the feet three times. Remember when we talked about the mandatory acts, we said once for each one of them. Face once, the arms once, right? Uh, wipe over the head and then the feet once, each one of them. Sunnah is to do three, two or, or better three, right? So doing three for each one of them is, a, is even better, and this is the sunnah of the Prophet And then we said also the boundary of the face is from the hairline until the chin or the jawbone, right? And then fr horizontally from the ear to the ear, not including the ear, obviously. From the ear, from the edge of the ear to the edge of the ear. A lot of people do this, right? They put water and then this, and then they do this. It doesn't reach all the face. All of this is the face and it needs to be washed, otherwise it's not a sound. Especially for the kids, right, they do this a lot. And some adults, if they aren't taught, right, nobody correct them or nobody told them, they may actually do this, but you see this quite often or quite common uh, among the kids, right, they quickly, khalas. <laughs> so, and then we also said uh, for the arms, with respect to the arms, it is very important that we wash from the fingertip, including the including the nails up until the up until the elbows a lot of by the way this is one a common common mistake some people make this common mistake whereby they think okay well we already washed our hands at the very beginning 
when it comes to wash the, washing the arms, they don't wash the, the, the hands, they just wash from here up until, the, up until the, uh, the elbows, thinking that we already wash the hands, and that is wrong. Actually, washing the hands as part of the arms, this is what is mandatory. The first three times that you wash your hands was not even mandatory. It was a sunnah, so even if you missed it, your wudu is still sound. But what is actually required is to wash the arms in here, including the, including the hands. You know, what the, you're, you're, are you following what the mistake is? So at the time, they make sure they wash the hands when it was sunnah. And in here, they missed it when it was mandatory. So be aware of that mistake. A lot of people do that, by the way. Um, and then also from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, we said is to wipe over the head and the ears once with fresh water. So you need to bring fresh water. You don't use the water, the leftover of the water from washing the, the arms, right? Because the arms, because the head, the wiping over the head comes after what? Washing the arms. Now your hands may still be wet. Some people may actually use that what left, left over of the water to wipe over their head and that is wrong. What you need to do is to bring fresh water, right? You put some water and then you, uh, you, know, uh, you throw the, the, the remaining of it. And then you wipe, fr starting from the hairline, right? You wipe over your uh, hair up until the edge of the, of the hair on from the back. And you may go come back to where you started. But one of them is enough. Either you go like this or like this. But what is better is to go like this. And then the ears, you wash the ears as well. Or you wipe over the ears, I'm sorry. You can, do, or you should do, I mean, this is the sunnah, with the same water that you wipe over your head, you use the same thing for, to, to wipe over your ears. You don't use new water, fresh water. Again, when we say that, you should really, uh, you know, uh, not exaggerate in using the water and not, you know, use uh, water extravagantly, right, in waste water. And we, we're going to see in the video how, what that means. You see a lot of people, by the way, waste gallons of water. Well, I, I can see it with my own eyes. People uh, waste gallons just to make one wudu. Gallons of water. You see the water flowing, mashallah, like a river. Just for one person. I mean, imagine on Friday how much water we waste. It's insane. And we're doing against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu yani You're making a ibadah in here that is a lot of ajr is attached to it. But you may actually be jeopardizing that ajr from another aspect, which is wasting. And Allah Azza wa Jal does not like those who are musrifin, right? Who waste. Also from the sunan of the wudu is to dhikr after the wudu, which we said is to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa, ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatahiri. Right? Which means I testify that there is no deity or no true God except Allah alone who has no partners and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Uh, and this is from the hadith of, uh, related by Imam Muslim and At-Tirmidhi where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever of you performs wudu carefully and then says, I testify that there is no true God except Allah alone who has no partners and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, the eight gates of Jannah are open for him. He may enter through whichever of the gates he desires. Allahu Akbar. And then Imam al-Tirmidhi, in his version, he, he added an addition, right? He has an addition to that hadith, and then he said, Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatahirin, and al Imam al-Albani judged that addition as, as sahiha, which means, O oh Allah, make me among those who repent and purify themselves. So this is what we talked about last week, right? Uh, let's go to the video continue the video. I know we, we haven't finished it and it is quite important. Uh, I think that will make it so uh, clear, right? When you see that, uh, when you see it in action, it, it gives you a better perspective. And, uh, you know, this is obviously something that is quite important. So with that said, let's put this video inshallah. All right. Let's see. 
here. It is connected, right? Module one. Oh, here you go. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right. So we said this is this video. This video is by a sheikh uh, called uh, Uthman al Khamis from Kuwait. Uh, very prominent sheikh over there, mashallah. And he has a lot of effort in teaching the deen and in debating Shia. Uh, in a very scientific way uh, but mashallah he also has a lot of effort in teaching the Quran uh, obviously he is a full-fledged uh, sheikh um, so let's start with the video inshallah and I will comment on it as we go uh, like I said unfortunately it's in Arabic but um, uh, I'll, I'll st uh, you know I'll stop it and, and, and uh, comment on it uh, as much as possible and I understand just from the gestures right I'm pretty sure you'll understand most of it inshallah so let's get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa rahim ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Fa insha'Allah ta'ala. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Ayyan Sufat. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam bi ala sunnat al-wudu. Wa ma yajibu al-wudu ee ayman. Wa ba'd ma yafaluhu al-nas min al-umur al-makruha. أو المحرمة في الوضوء. أول شيء أن يوحلها القلب. أن الإنسان يروي بقلبه أنه يريد. So he's basically saying that he will obviously demonstrate to us how to perform the wudu, uh, obviously on the sunnah, point out some of the mistakes that some people do, right? And then he started by saying what is required is the niyyah, the intention, the intention. وهذه هي الأصل أن كل إنسان ما جاء إلى المسجد أو ما جاء إلى مكان الوضوء إلا وهو يريد أن يتوضأ للصلاة، هذا هو الأصل. لكن هي قد تختلف أو تنتفي النية في من يريد أن يعلم مثلا يريد أن يعلم شخص لا يعلم أن يتوضأ، أقول له افعل كذا وافعل كذا وأتوضأ أمام وضوء الصلاة وأنا لم يخطر في بالي أني أتوضأ. هنا لا يصح هذا الموضوع لأنه ليس فيه نية. أما عامة الناس فالأصل أنهم لا يتوضؤون إلا بنية، فلا ينبغي التكلف what he said about the intention is basically that we said the intention is in the heart. Really, the intention is the intention of the heart. Yani what your heart knows that it is doing, right? And what the de determination of the heart. And he said this is really the, the most common case for everybody. Yani when you come to the masjid or when you, uh, you know, pr pr pray at home, right? When you make wudu, you know you know why you're going to, to wash your you know all these organs, right? You know from your heart that you are performing the wudu. He said the only exception, for example, maybe if you're teaching somebody, right? You're teaching kids or you're teaching other people you, how to do the wudu, and it never came to your mind that you're actually performing a real wudu, only to demonstrate to others. So, for example, the sheikh now maybe he doesn't have the intention that he's actually making a wudu, right? Because he's only uh, you know videotaping this as a demonstration to others. But for the most part of it, right? For most people, when they come to pray, they do the wudu, and they know why they're doing that, right? It's not just you know general cleanliness, but it is the wudu that is required for the salah. So there's no need to actually make a big deal out of it. And some people insist that you actually have to you know, speak it out and loudly and say that I am making wudu for this prayer, all of this is not required, nor has it been narrated to us from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The wudu, we said that the day of the day of the day of the day 
الفعلي الوضوء الان ساتوضا مع الشرع ثم ساتوضا وضوءا كاملا بدون شرع واثناء الشرع سننبه على بعض الاخطاء او بعض السلوك نبدا بحول الله تبارك وتعالى انا اتجهز للوضوء اول شيء نبدا بالوضوء هو التسميه لحديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عند النسائي توضؤوا بسم الله فاقول قبل ان اتوضا بسم الله ثم ابدا بغسل So of you, I'm pretty sure you all understood this, right? The first sunnah, right? And it is a sunnah. So what if somebody forgets or doesn't say Bismillah? We say his wudu is sound, right? Uh, but it is from the sunnah, and obviously that makes, it, that makes it a more perfect and more complete wudu to say Bismillah, right? And this is the hadith that we gave, which is in, in, uh, in, sah in uh, Sunan al-Tirmidhi. So Bismillah is the first thing. Then he said, "You wash your hands three times, and once, and washing it once is also is also sufficient, right? And again, washing the hands at the beginning is also only sunnah. We said, uh, you know, just remembered what we said also is that it becomes required if you're doing the wudu when you wake up in the, for example, for fajr prayer, for the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu who ordered the person to actually wash his hands when you wake up. So he said, you don't know where your hand was during the night." So he, uh, he ordered or guided him to wash his hands three times. So we say that that becomes required, for example, when you wake either for the night prayer or for fajr prayer and you want to perform wudu. In other cases, it is a sunnah. Also then he said, you know, washing the mouth, right, uh, by swirling water around, right, up to three times if you want. And then likewise uh, cleaning the nose three times as well. He's now talking about washing the face and he's giving the boundaries of what the face means, right? Again, like, like I said, people sometimes, you know, out of you know hurry, right? And in, in, in such a hurry, he wants to perform the the, uh, the wudu very quickly. Or kids, for example, you know they just want to do it and get done with it, right? So they may not actually wash the whole face, and that's important, by the way. It must be washed, right? Remember, we said it is a prerequisite of the of the wudu. All the organs need to be washed, and they need to be washed fully. If you wash half of the face, that doesn't it's not sufficient. And that wudu is not a sound wudu. So he's giving, like we talked about it before, what the boundaries of, of the face, from the hairline until the chin, and from the edge, from the edge of the ear to the edge of the ear. This is, all of this is the face. <laughs> ثم بعد ذلك أغسل يدي من أطراف الأصابع إلى المرفق، وأطراف الأصابع تغسل والمرفق يغسل، ويخطب بعض الناس يتوضأ يغسل من هنا، وهذا خطأ لابد أن تغسل كف مرة ثانية، وهذا ركن من أركان الوضوء، ثم So again, this is what we talked about, right? Clean, uh, washing the arms means that you wash from the finger trip, fingertips, including the nail, up until the elbows. Like I said, a lot of people, and he pointed this out, that a lot of people make the mistake of not washing the hands. Just they, wa they start from here up until the elbows. And we say that washing the hand in, uh, as part of washing the arms is a mandatory act, a mandatory pillar of the wudu. Now, arkan al wajiba. So again, he's saying that you know it is the sunnah to start with the right side and then the left side. But if you start with the left side, the wudu is sound, no problem, inshallah. <laughs> Again, he's saying wiping over the head. You could do it either from the front to the back or from the back to the front. 
and if you do it from the, to the back and then back to the front, as when you started, is even better. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, by the way, regarding this, we mentioned for the women, especially the women for, with the long hair, right? Some of them, they have really long hair. What we said, what is required for their wiping their head, right, is to actually wipe like the men, from the beginning, from the front, from the hairline, right, until the, until the edge of the hair on the back, on their neck, they don't necessarily have to wipe the length of their hair. But from the front to the back of, uh, uh, you know, the line of the hair on the back, this is what is required. Again, he's, very, he's warning against using water extravagantly, you know, and he's gonna mention it a couple of times. Because this is important, Yahwan. You see a lot of people, either at home or in the masajid, they spend so much water just to perform one wudu. You don't need to do all of that. Wallahi, you don't need as much water. Yani, a small bottle of water is all you need and more than enough to perform a full, perfect wudu, sound wudu. You don't need all of this water. So he's saying, obviously, you start with washing of the hands, right? And if you, uh, it is the sunnah to actually make sure that the water gets, uh, you know, in between the fingers, make sure that, it, you know, the water gets everywhere. But obviously, I mean, in general, it's going to get everywhere, right? Unless you're afraid that it, there's some place where it didn't reach, right? But some people actually make it a mandatory, uh, something mandatory or obligatory act of the wudu. And we say, no, that's not the case. And uh, he said he actually warned or, or, or mentioned that the, that the hadith that they rely upon, there is a problem with its authenticity, right? And a lot of the... Uh, companions who narrated the way that he alayhi salatu wasalam, performed the wudu, they did not mention that he actually uh, used his fingers to go in between, right? But, you know, in general, when you wash, right, it's, it's very, it, it, water gets very easily everywhere. So no problem, inshallah. Now, it becomes me even probably more recommended for the toys, right? Because the toys are, you know, cl much closer than the fingers are, right? The toes, you know, if you don't actually, uh, with your fingers, make sure that the water gets in between the toes, it may not get there. If you have, if you have a uh, uh, khatam, right? If you have a ring uh, and, um, you know, it is tight and you're afraid that water may not get beneath it to reach the skin beneath it, then you must actually take it off and and, and, uh, and perform the wudu. If it is a little loose and you know that water gets in between uh, or beneath it, then that, no problem, you don't have to take it off. But if it is really tight, right? Some of those rings are really tight. Water doesn't get uh, below, you know, beneath it. Then you have to take it off. Uh, you take it off. <laughs> Yeah. This is what most people do, right? 
mashallah, water flowing, right, river. This is what most people do, to the maximum. Mashallah. He said, just a little bit of water is enough. That's it. So washing the hands. Now notice the sunnah is to actually uh, uh, take water with your right hand, right, to clean your mouth and to clean your nose, and then you blow your nose with your left hand. So you do like this, right? With your left, with your left uh, hand. This is the sunnah. So you take the water with the right hand and then you blow it out with your left hand. Remind me, brothers, you asked about al istinja and al istijmar uh, two weeks ago. Inshallah, uh, remind me after we're done with the video to explain what, what they are. Notice he's washing the entire face. So this is the second time, right? The question that I have, I noticed uh, he did uh, do the uh, swirling of the thing um, in his mouth, and then next to the uh, sniffing uh, of the water, mm -hmm. his nose, right? Yes. So he, did, he combined both. He combined them. He said this is the sunnah, so basically you take water and you do, part of the water gets into your mouth and part of it gets into your nose, but if you do them separately, one, so you start with the mouth and then the nose, no problem, inshallah. No problem. Both are from the sunnah. Yes. We're not okay. No problem. Okay. Both are sufficient. Okay. That's not washing the face. <laughs> not all of it was, was washed. So he said, this is khata. Mistake. You know what khata means, right? Khata. Yani not to wash all the face just like this. You know, it doesn't get everywhere. It's khata. Wrong. The sahih is to actually make sure that the water gets all the way from uh, the hairline to the chin and from the edge of the uh, ear to the edge of the ear. All of this need to be washed without, you know, extravagantly, uh, you know, sp uh, wasting water. No. Remember the massaging we said? Sunnah. If you don't massage, alhamdulillah, it's still sound. But what is better is to actually, as you are washing, as you are washing your arms, is to actually massage it, right? Starting with the right hand. Notice. Now notice, he said there are two ways you could do this. You could either you start with the water from near to the elbows and you walk all the way down, you massage it, or you can start with your hand, right? Put some water and then, you know, let it flow on your arms to the elbows and then you massage it with your other hand. And he said, and he's gonna say this actually, uh, so that we don't stop too often. He said this is probably uh, even closer to the way that it is expressed in the ayah. Because notice what Allah Azza wa Jal says. Ya ayuha alladhina amanu. Oh, who you believe. If you rise for the prayer, إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your hands, or your face, I'm sorry, right? وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ And your arms to the elbows. So it, make, it, it, it gives you the feeling that you start from here all the way to the elbows. 
right? So this is another way. Both are fine, no problem. See, you, you take water and then you. So again, he's uh, uh, re-emphasizing and reminding that it needs to be done from the fingertips, including the nails, all the way to the to the elbows. Don't miss the don't don't miss the uh, the hands. Now he's gonna show us without massaging, right? Remember, we said you can actually let the water just flow. If you don't massage, no problem. But what is better is to actually massage it. Notice, as long as you make sure that the water gets everywhere. Sahih. The vast majority of the scholars say that it is sahih. Yani it is a sound wudu. But better to massage it. Now the left side. Now notice, for wiping, the wa for wiping the head, he brought fresh water, not the leftover of the arms, right? He just got done with washing the, hand, the arms, right? He didn't just use the, the leftover of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the arms, right? He brought fresh water, right? And then he's gonna wipe his head. Notice he started from here, went all the way to the back, and then back to the to where he started. One of them is enough. And then he said, notice that the, my my his hands are still wet. So with that leftover of the wiping of the head, you wipe your your ears. <laughs> So now the feet, obviously, you start with the right side, that is the sunnah, and then notice that he's using his fingers, his hands, right, to go in between the toes to make sure that the water gets everywhere, right? And then washing the, the foot up until the ankles, right, including the ankles. Second time. Third time, right? Three times is sunnah. Once is sufficient. Then the left side. Second time. Now he's talking about the beard, right? Some people have light beard, some of, mashallah, really fuller and, you know, greater beard. So he's saying if it is light, then you have to actually make sure that you wash it in and out, inside and outside, right? All the way to the, to the skin. If it is, mashallah, fuller and bigger, right? Then it suffices to wash it from the outside, right? But what is sunnah also to actually use your fingers to go in between with your wet fingers 
it is better. But if you don't, if you just wash it from the outside, sufficient. Mujzi. <laughs> Okay. Now, obviously, he performed wudu with explanation. Now, he's not going to explain. He's going to repeat it, the, yani, the full wudu with all the sunnah, exactly as it was narrated in the hadith of Uthman ibn Affan, how he saw the Prophet وسلم, perform the wudu with everything that he explained, right? Full wudu. Do you see that as he's washing, he shuts the water? He doesn't let it run, right? He only turns it on when he needs. He takes the water, then shut it off, right? Clean the organ that he's working on, and then don't just let it run. River, mashallah. <laughs> Three times. Three times, left side. Same water. Left side. saying now that you're done with the wudu, you can use it, uh, you know, a towel to dry yourself, it's p permissible, or you can choose not to do that. He's going to say that the Rasulullah chose not to actually uh, dry himself after, you know, after the wudu, because, uh, you know, the, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that the sins, uh, you know, goes, they drain from the body uh, with the water, right? Even they drain under the, the nails from the, you know, from the arms, from the feet. Right? They, wash, they, they are washed away with the water. So he chose not to, not to dry himself, alayhi salatu wasalam. But if you do that, no problem, inshallah. Not a problem. <laughs> Uh, 
wiping the neck. <laughs> and he's going to say that there is absolutely no evidence on that, right? Doing this regularly, obviously, is a bid'ah, is an addition that is not authentically supported by a hadith from the Prophet wasallam, and it is not part of the part of the wudu. A lot of people do that, but it is not part of the wudu. <laughs> There is no authentic hadith that he alayhi salatu wasalam did that, that he wiped over his, his neck. Ameen. What he's saying now that obviously the one, the wudu that he demonstrated now is the, the most perfect wudu, which is three, three times for each of the organs. But he said obviously what is sufficient is to actually do it only once for each organ. And he's going to actually demonstrate it, do it once re quickly, do it once, once, once. And, we, and he's going to say that this is actually a sound wudu. This is the bare minimum. And it is sound, a valid wudu. No problem, inshallah. مرة مرة Once every organ. of the beard. pretty much done with this. What he's saying is at the end of the, uh, the video is that the reason that he made this, this, uh, this video to demonstrate the wudu is that he saw somebody who was supposedly uh, demonstrating how to do the wudu in a very exaggerating way. Very exaggerating way. And then he was saying basically that I took this from my fathers and my fathers from my grandfathers all the way to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, I, nobody knows who the, his fathers are or his grandfathers are. And he's saying, obviously, for the ulama, this sanad is not acceptable. It is worth nothing, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know who your parents are, let alone their grandpar your grandparents or their parents all the way. Wh what is the chain? Who, who are the people in that chain and that sanad, right? <laughs> it is worthless. But this is the demonstration of the uh, wudu of the Prophet وسلم, exactly as narrated to us by many, many companions, including Uthman ibn Affan, Khalifa uh, al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anhu arda, exactly as he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam perform it. And like, he's, like the Shaykh said, I repeat, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us to perform all the types of ibadat according to what Allah Azza wa Jal wants, according to the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi performed them, because no, no question about it, this is what gets you the most ajr. And this is what makes that deed and that ibadah more beloved and most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we finish by this. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana. Allahumma wafiqna li fa'li al-khayrat wa tarki al-munkarat. 
وأن نتبع سنة نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا وبالله التوفيق وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله